Cubs won each of the last seven games, and Mark Stoops' team take the field trying to get right. Two weeks ago, they're in the top ten, but back-to-back -back losses and missed opportunities for Kentucky as his fan base worried about a mid-season swoon. Cats hope the home field and the home crowd will give them advantage tonight as Mark Stoops and company get ready on another primetime SEC showdown. That's a good sign. Mississippi State will take the field here in just a moment. What a difference a couple years makes with this air raid offense. It has its roots right here in the bluegrass when Mike Leach was the offensive coordinator for Hal Mummy about 25 years ago. But that was then. This is now Tom Hart, Jordan Rogers, Cole Kublick down on the field. And what they have now is what Mike Leach always wants. He has a quarterback who can he can trust, who puts up monster numbers. Yeah, Will Rogers is not a system quarterback. And I think a lot of times the air raid kind of lends itself to that. All the numbers, the completions, you go, well, it's just because the system. No, this quarterback, Will Rogers, would be a top in the entire country, no matter the offense. He's rewriting the record books, but what is most interesting about this air raid is that it has the ability lately to turn into a ground and pound when they want it. Will Rogers said, we are kicking the door down on drop eight. You want to go drop eight against us? Good. I'm going to audible to a run every time I see it, and the run game has really emerged for Mississippi State, and it's been the difference maker lately. And that freedom that Will Rogers has running this offense has been a big difference ma make, uh, maker. Meanwhile, down on the field is Cole, and Cole, huge difference maker for Kentucky. Future first round pick Will Levis is back on the field tonight. He's going to be back, Tom. We don't know how limited he is going to be. He's going to have a shank in his shoe, a metal shank in that insole. He's going to wear a cleat that's one size too big because he's got that turf toe that's been hampering him for the last few weeks. We don't know exactly how he's going to move. He looked pretty good in warm ups, going through his drops, going through the motions, but it's his left foot. So you just wonder driving off that right foot's not going to affect him as much when he does have to elude pressure. If there is a bootleg that's called, an offensive coordinator, Rich Grangillo, told us, I'm not changing anything in the office. Every play is at our disposal tonight. I'm not sure how much we're going to see him move around, but if he does, will that injury impact what he's capable of doing? And when his career started at Penn State, he was a physical run first guy. That's a big part of Rick Scangarello's playbook. But they're going to be without some a key part of their offense tonight. Last week, their three top receivers combined for just five catches in about 50 yards. And Tavion Robinson, one of the key guys, is unavailable tonight. He will not play. How does it impact Will? Well, it definitely impacts him. That's been his safety net a lot of times because Tavion's such a good route runner. But they have two extremely talented, true freshman receivers in Dane Key and Barryon Brown. The key is get them easy throws, right? This, this offensive line for Kentucky has struggled in protection. Mississippi State is going to blitz and be aggressive. So get quick, easy throws for your injured quarterback to get it to your playmakers on the outside as frequently as possible. And we welcome those of you who just watched Tennessee walk off Alabama with a 40 yard field goal and in that long losing streak. And now this SEC has been turned upside down. Tennessee still undefeated. Alabama suffers a loss. And here, Kentucky tries to figure things out. They had multiple chances, but turnovers in the red zone against Ole Miss. Dropped him out of the top 10 and the last week played without their star quarterback. Now they've started conference play one and two. Triple header of action this weekend. Big Blue Madness last night. Keeneland ongoing. What a weekend to be in the bluegrass. Chance four will kick it off. Lenitra Griffin is back to receive for State. And no return where there's a will there's a way and there's a way towards wins for this Mississippi State team. Will Rogers Jr. from Brandon Mississippi is a quintessential Mississippi State quarterback like he's a down home Mississippi dude who can absolutely sling it. Yeah he, he just loves hanging out hunting fishing and he can rip it. And one thing about Mike Leach and his quarterback in this system it is a non negotiable that accuracy is a key characteristic and Will Rogers has that he'll put it on full display tonight. He is one touchdown shy of Dak Prescott's program record. 
Best numbers in the country in many categories. Who moved first? Offside on the defense number zero. It's Dion in the Walker. Causing an offensive reaction. Five yard penalty. It remains first down. Freshman from Detroit. We talk a lot about that drop eight that everyone does against this air raid system, but you see right now four guys at the line of scrimmage for Kentucky, maybe respecting that run game that Mississippi State's put on display. One of those is Jordan Wright. We've got back to back flags, and this time it was right on the end. Brad White tried to reinvent what they would do last year. Offside on the defense number 15, unabated to the backfield. Five yard penalty. That results in a first down. The first time. Mike Leach came in here with the air raid against Kentucky. Red White's defense held him to just two points. They intercepted him six times. It caused a quarterback change. It eventually got Will Rogers on the field running this system. And then last year, they tried to mix some things up and put guys out of position. It really cost Kentucky. Rogers had a field day. Here's Dylan Johnson, and here's the Mississippi State run game past midfield on a 16 yard run. This is going to be a storyline to follow. Last year, Kentucky was able to run for 30, excuse me, Mississippi State ran for 35 attempts last year, three touchdowns, and had a ton of success because Kentucky was out of place, missed a ton of tackles, something they have to improve upon tonight. So Rodgers to throw, and here's the check down, and incomplete Dylan Johnson, and that is a major part of Mississippi State's offense and a major concern for Kentucky. Yeah, it's really an extension of the run. Right balance is a key word for the air raid or sometimes the lack of balance but attacking the perimeter with your running backs on quick throws is really a run for Mike Leach he looks down at that and goes well that's kind of the same thing run game has been incredibly efficient this year opening drive for Mississippi State a first down on consecutive Kentucky penalties. Once again to the check down, and that is a solid open field tackle made by Jordan Wright. It's a loss of five. They're going to have to make these plays if they want to slow down this state attack. Yeah, Jordan Wright, one of the guys that when you go against air raid, he's a little bit out of the ordinary position. He's going to be playing in coverage a lot more. He's capable of that. He's long and lanky. He can get in those pass windows, but that's one thing he's going to have to do. Get in zone coverage and rally for the tackle. Third and 15 and loud at Kroger Field. And movement on the right tackle, Cameron Jones. Start on the offense, number 58. That's a five yard penalty, and it remains third down. Jones has been around for a while, fifth year at a Starkville High School. The former Yellow Jacket couldn't hold his water, and this will make it a third and 20. Four man rush. Incomplete to the back again. That time, Woody Marks there trying to get it to. And you don't usually see Will Rogers miss with open receivers. No, they're trying to run a little delay route, run everybody off, get the ball to the running back in space. But you're going to see right here, Trevin Wallace able to beat the right guard one on one, get enough pressure on Will Rogers that he's got to let that go sooner than he wants to. So here's Barry on Brown to return. George Georgopoulos, one of the two punters State uses, gets it away. And Brown, only a couple on the return after a 40 yard punt. So we'll try to get a feel for whether or not Will Levis is closer to 100% or not. 6'3", 232, transfer from Penn State. Al Kuyper has him as the number four overall prospect in next summer's draft. And Will Levis' offensive coordinator, Rich Scangarello, said he's the best he's ever been around. NFL, college, no matter what, he thinks this guy has a bright future. And boy, has Kentucky missed him the last week or so. Good to have him back in the lineup. 
And for just the second time this season, he's in the lineup with Chris Rodriguez, and they will run it on first down. Rodriguez, maybe a yard and a half. Who's now fifth in school history in career yards. Second down for the Cats, who last year, another 10 win season, beat Iowa in the Citrus Bowl. Second 10 win season over the last four years. Marked only the fourth time in school history they've won double digit games. On second and seven, Rodriguez again. And barrels his way through. That'll leave third and short. Let's get to the studio. Darn it. Here's how it ended, guys. Chase McGrath, who earlier missed an extra point. Byron Young got a finger on it. It was a knuckleball through from 40. 15 game losing streak to Bama. Gone, guys. Wow. First win since 2006 for Tennessee against Alabama. Third and one for Kentucky. Going two backs here, multiple tight ends, and the first man through is Rodriguez, who picks up the first down. Cole, we were wondering what Kentucky would look like without Tavion Robinson in the lineup tonight. And there's a good chance we see extra tight ends and some jumbo packages. I like to see some bigger bodies in the lineup. Guerrero, the offensive coordinator, says he thinks that will calm the Mississippi State front down. As we know, this defense is going to give you a lot of looks, do a lot of different things. He thinks he can force them to chill out a little bit with bigger personnel. 84, Josh Caddis is back after being out with injury. See two tight ends there at the oh, end of the line boy. of scrimmage. Jeremy Flax. First out of the gate. He's... Back on the field to probably rotate with him and DeAndre Buford tonight. Flex did not play in a previous week's game against South Carolina. I like that little neck roll. It's kind of like a new school neck roll. That's Almost like an ergonomic airplane pillow you got there, you know? <laughs> I haven't seen that before. You had ergonomic on your bingo card. Congratulations. You can cross it off. You're welcome, John from Ohio. <laughs> This is to Tom McClain, and he finds uh, going rough. Defensive coordinator for Mississippi State is Zach Garnett. He's drawn a lot of praise in the SEC with the job that he's done. It can be a little bit non-traditional what they do. He played and coached under Rocky Long. Runs a lot of the 3-3-5 principles. Levis, the hair behind his intended receivers, but Brown was running into coverage. I believe third and long. What makes what Zach Garnett does difficult? Well, so much happens pre-snap, so much happens post-snap. You never know where they're going to come from. And a guy to focus on as well for Mississippi State's defense is Tyrus Wheat. They're going to be bringing him from all over. He's really their fourth rusher. He's a D lineman that plays off the ball, and they'll add him in between the tackles. They'll add him on the outsides. You see him lining up right here. Kentucky's going to have to find him and account for him in the run game and pass game on nearly every single play. And that time they get to Levis, but somehow he muscles it away to McLean. And he takes it just short of the marker. Quarterback protection has been a major issue for Kentucky this season. Levis has been sacked 19 times. And they're going to keep the offense on the field, a fourth and one. I love the aggressiveness. Let's see if they run a play. Are they going to come out maybe in hard count? Try to get Mississippi State to jump. There's a bunch of tight ends on the field. Three right now. They're in that heavy jumbo package. Here's Rodriguez. Found a hole. And he took it for the first down. He nearly busted through for a touchdown. It's an eight-yard gain. Boy, watch the tight end here, Jordan Dingle leading up. He's really at a fullback spot here. This is just a lead zone blocking scheme with a lead blocker there. Aggressive call there from Rich Gangarello, but I love it. This run game needs a boost of confidence. They need some adrenaline. They need to get things going on the ground to open up the play action, which is really the identity of this offense. The big blue wall had been a point of pride for years here in Lexington. 
but struggled mightily last week against South Carolina. Rodriguez again. And what a difference he makes when you add him to the run game. He missed the first four games of the season, the offseason suspension. Yeah, I mean, it, it's the offense is different with Chris Rodriguez, and not just when the run game gets going, but like I said, the identity of this pass game is in play action. And when the ground game gets going and Chris Rodriguez is on the field, the play action is so much better. You see the numbers there from last year. They got to get back to that being a staple, which means ground game's got to get going. And second and one, they swing it outside. Chauncey Magwood. He's taking Tavian Robinson's spot. There's a flag at the end of it. Dane Key, the freshman, may have had a little too much on his block. We'll see. It's a physical block on the outside. Key had a little jersey. He also had some hands up in his face. Be interesting to see who they call it on here. Couple flags on the field. I did say number six, Dane Key. Here's another look, and that'll wipe off a major play to key freshman contributing at wide receiver. Yeah, Dane Key right here. Perimeter blocking is such a key part of explosive run plays. Working on Forbes there, Mississippi State's best DB. And yeah, just a little too much jersey there. Love the position, love the aggressiveness. As he starts to drift away, you just got to let him go. Here's Kavashie smoke. And another flag down. Ooh. Two flags down. Loading one on the far side of the field at about the line of scrimmage. It's like they only called holding. That was like Keaton Upshaw. And then a sideline warning. Lee Hedrick is our referee tonight. Lee's got to get that mic working. Cole, run him some fresh batteries because if this trend continues, Kentucky may uh, set a record. That's already the fifth flag against the Cats tonight. Let's take my mic out there for him. <laughs> Help him out. Cole, uh, how would you describe how Kentucky's O line played last week? Not great. <laughs> Below average. And, and especially like you said before, Tom, the standard has been set here for a long time with that big blue wall and obviously John Schlarman and what they what they did. I saw Logan Stenberg before the game. Bunchy Stallings is here, Drake Jackson. Those are the guys that kind of created that offensive line and just has not been the same. Mississippi State brings four and too high trying to find Jordan Dingle. Todd McShay made an interesting comment talking about Will Levis recently. Levis is a big guy, 6'3, 232. So his love of the weight room impacts his accuracy on short throws. Is that does that have validity to it? Yeah, I think so. It could. I mean, I was a guy my first year, I, I just wanted to be as big and as bulky as possible, which is really stupid. You get too tight, and sometimes you end up muscling those throws. You're less fluid. It should just be a flick of the wrist. He's got most talented arm I've maybe seen and been around so he's capable of just flicking it out there but yeah you get a little, a little too tightly wound sometimes fits this one into a window that's good for a Kentucky first down but the ball came loose at the end and it's Mississippi State football like Rashad Lewis gave it up before he went to the ground Kentucky turned it over in the second play against South Carolina last week and watch 19 Colin Duncan here. It's a great job as the receiver gets stood up and then Jaylen, going for the ball. Apologies. Then Jalen Green with the recovery. And the Mississippi State defense stiffens and they take it away from the Cats. As the Mississippi State offense will take the field. Going to show you a little bit why they're different this year. Yeah, they're still air raid. What's the left side of this offensive line come off the football? You see nice movement there from Nick Jones and Dollar Bill Johnson. Nasty. Dollar Bill's going to need change after that double team. Right side of the offensive line, Cole Smith, Cam Jones. Movement four or five yards down the field. Absolutely filthy what this offensive line doing in the run game. But another flag on this one, which would have gone for a first down. And 
our SEC crew working overtime, and this one will go against State. Perfect timing, Cole. So that'll back him up and make it first and long. We're talking pregame about this being a the physicality that you talk about with a great offensive line doesn't always go together with air raid reputation. No, and, and what you're going to notice, they haven't got any yet, but Mississippi State's utilizing a lot of two running back sets. And with that, they get an extra blocker at the lead point of attack, and they get an extra double team as well, which increases that physicality. We'll point it out as soon as they go to that package. The shovel pass to Jaquavius Marks, and he takes it past the 30. Derek Jackson, the tackle in for Jaquez Jones. You'll see right tackle right here, 58, Cam Jones. Not going to have a ton of impact on the actual play, but just look at the finish. Get him to the ground, bowl him over. That kind of physicality, you can't be taught. It's a, it's a mentality, it's a behavior that you just have. And this offensive line has found it as a group this year for Mississippi State. What do you love as much as Cole loves off, uh, physical O-line play? Um, a good hair pomade. <laughs> Avocado toast. Incomplete to Justin Robinson. Netflix and chill. <laughs> Tight suits. Tight suits. Tom yep. Hart. <laughs> Do you want me to keep going? Or? Yeah. Oh, it's third down. Here we go. Come on, get with it. Rogers only two for five tonight. Interesting here, Kentucky. Dropping eight looks like you're going to rush four here, try to get some pressure. They brought a different four, and that brought pressure indeed, and a flag on the play. Carrington Valentine was one of the four rushers, but Kate came on a corner blitz. It's a loss of ten. And I love the look. They drop off. There is no foul for offensive holding. Fourth down. It's really called a simulated pressure because only four are going to come, but it's not the four you think that are going to come. Carrington Valentine's going to come off the edge here. They're going to drop the defensive end, so you still get four rushers, but you still have seven in coverage, so you don't lose a guy on the back end or open up an easy throw for Will Rogers. A great play call there by Brad White on third and long to dial up some pressure. And the electric Barry on Brown receive. Archer Trafford to punt it away. Trafford nearly got it blocked, but got away a boomer. Brown pushed back to the 21. Flag at the outset. This one will be coming back, but it's so fun to watch because he's got elite speed. And Barry on Brown flexing that speed will take it all the way, and it will go all the way back to the very first block, which would negate a 78 yard return. Brown just saw the flag. Oh, isn't that the worst? Watching that, I mean, you're a Kentucky fan. It's like you just started a diet, and all your friends are eating cake, and you're just sitting there watching, knowing this is not going to end well. And I'm really disappointed. Well, you see the speed, the athleticism. Barry on Brown has been tracked on their catapult GPS system at 22.48 miles per hour in game. That's flying. Actually, two of them, including a block in the back. And instead of a quick six for Kentucky, Will Levis will have to go to work. That will bring it all back 78 yards for nothing. SEC Saturday Night is presented by T-Mobile, bringing 5G to hometowns across the SEC, and in part by Duke's Mayo, the only condiment with twang. November of 98, Tim Couch to Craig Yeast, and Kentucky makes it to a bowl game for the first time in five years. Three second half scoring drives Couch through for 338, two touchdowns in the building tonight. Former first round pick. 
It was how mommy's second year as Kentucky's head coach and their offensive coordinator was Mike Leach ran into Tim at breakfast yesterday I said I might have a couple of Leach stories and he goes I could write a book. Be interesting to hear from Tim how the playing in the air raid and some of the negative connotations that come with being a system quarterback impacted him at the next level. Yeah, I'd love to hear that because you hear about the air raid and how well there's kind of concepts but also we're just trying to find grass and well he kind of has this route but if this happens he could do this so it doesn't translate directly to the NFL but then again there's a lot of guys that have come from these new age systems yep. that are a lot more simple that are having success now in this new era of the NFL so from a play calling standpoint there, there's very little simple about what Will Levis is asked to do in this pro style system run by Rich Gangarello seven years in the NFL with the Niners when they went to the NFC title game 15 years of college and there's a couple for Jatan McLean and that a lot of elements last week but, but just one of the reasons why Kentucky had such a hard time moving the ball last week with Kaya Sharon who was getting his first ever action absolutely I mean you got a quarterback that a young quarterback then that's got to handle protections and sight adjusts and Against the blitz down the sideline, and it is caught. There's Dane Key, the freshman from right here in Lexington, out of Frederick Dulles, Douglas. It's a gain of 31. That's a great job by Will Levis hanging in the pocket. An even better job by Dane Key on the outside of tracking this ball. Will Levis had to let this go so early, and Key made a great adjustment back inside to snag it. Catch going tempo here. Tom McClain takes it past midfield on a pickup of four. How about Key? That is special. That is such a tough catch. Oh, hey, oh, catch was quotations? It? I don't know. Well, that, and that explains why they went tempo to get to the line. And smart. Get the snap off. Really smart call there by Rich Gangarello. Knowing there might have been the ground involved on that tough catch. So get to the ball, snap it before guys upstairs can take a look at it. Might have got away with one. Here's Chris Rodriguez at second and six. Broke a couple tackles and picked up five. Back to the studio, Dari. All right, Tom, keeping our eye on uh, what's going on around the country, of course. What a big day around the country for football. Jordan Travis breaks free for Florida State. They take the early lead on fourth rank Clemson, but DJ Uyunglele just hit a long touchdown pass, 7 7 first quarter. Guys? All right, thanks. Can't wait for halftime to learn more about that Alabama Tennessee game. Bama allowed 52 points. That's their most allowed since 1907. Wow. Long time ago. High formation here. Third and one. Rodriguez hit at the line of scrimmage and stop. Jet Johnson, product out of Tupelo, the first man there. Great read and react here by Jet Johnson, knowing it's short yardage. Kentucky's going to try to get a double team down to him, try to get a tight end off him, but Jet was too quick there to the point of attack. Read it, reacted right away. And another decision here on fourth and short. Easy decision it seems tonight for Rich Gangarello. He's trusting this run game. Rodriguez alone back. And a sneak for Levis and he crawls forward for the first down. The adrenaline you would imagine even if that foot should experience much pain is going to run right through it right now. Yeah, that, that's one that you would watch though because that left foot steps back and a lot of torque and bend on that toe that is injured. I mentioned I had the same exact injury so tonight Will Levis has a cleat that's one size bigger on that left foot. He has a metal shank underneath the cushioned insole to try to prevent a lot of that bend that you normally get that aggravates that toe. Adrenaline helps, but at some point, it's just a pain tolerance. Play action. Levis has to scramble, and he got tripped up. And there's a flag on the play. Tamonte Russell got to him. Coming in 25 sacks allowed for Kentucky this season. One of the highest numbers in the country. 
a holding penalty will back him up even further. That stat's really twofold, right? I mean, the offensive line can play better. We know that. Cole said that. We watched the tape, but also a lot of the pass plays are a little slower developing. A lot of the play action plays take time. You got young receivers. That timing is continuing to develop. McLean up first and 20. It's back to the line of scrimmage. Cameron Young to stop. State still without Jaden Cromedy on the interior. So Young, Pickering, and Tarleton will split time there. There's quarterback coach combo. Mike Leach doesn't concern himself much with defense, does he? No. No, he's an offensive guy. We were talking to Zach Garnett, the defensive coordinator. He said, I think we, we talked about a timeout last week, and that might be the first time I've ever talked to him in game. Here's McLean out of the backfield. Gain of three. Cameron Richardson the stop. Kind of nice as a defensive coordinator, though. You got full autonomy, but he's like, man, I went and asked him, you know, it was a big moment in the game. Can I take a timeout here? And he was like, man, I think that's literally the first time that we had a conversation in the middle of the game. <laughs> that is rare. Yes, very. His head coaches are at least passively involved via the headset if, with the other side, whatever they're not directly tied to. I think it shows you the trust he has in Zach Arnett, though. Yeah. A ton of laundry on the field tonight. Kentucky already flagged seven times. Make it eight. Hey, the surprise to me with these procedural penalties, the false starts, illegal substitutions, it, they're happening with Will Levis as a yeah. signal caller, not a backup. Yeah, you would expect your. And again, I don't know exactly what's happening here, who's lining up where and where they're supposed to be, but you know, he has full autonomy of this offense. And that's one thing Rich Gangarello was so impressed with when we sat down with him, just his knowledge, his football acumen. So, yeah, you'd expect some of these penalties to not be there. And maybe last week it would have been more of an issue, but. Here comes pressure. Levis taken down again. Another Mississippi State sack. You said Tyus Reed would play a key role. And he came submarining in for his third sack of the season. Yeah, this time Wheat, who they'll move all around working on the edge on DeAndre Buford, who started last week in place of Jeremy Flax. It'll be in and out of the relationship on the right side of your screen there. And again, the mobility of Will Levis, not what it's used to being with that injured foot. And Mississippi State taking full advantage of that early tonight. Far. 21 14 Gators, guys. Yeah, mistakes for the LSU. Jack Besh fumbled on the punt. Well, Kentucky will punt it away. Look at that. The punter moved one step to his right. Stuff he would love that. Others, not so much. We're going to go pay the bills after that 43 yard punt. Rajon Rondo and company on the sideline tonight. Mississippi State held scoreless in the first quarter. That's a rarity. They've been fantastic in the opening frame all season. One of the best in the country. And they use Caleb Ducking picks up eight on first down. The first time Mississippi State has come out in this two running back set. A lot of teams call it a pony personnel package. It allows them an extra lead blocker in the run game, which allows their offensive line to have two double teams. And that physicality that Cole was talking about going to be on full display if they hand the ball off here. Pony like the SMU pony play action. Rodgers fires good for a first down. The Dietrich Griffin Tulu out of Philadelphia Mississippi with the catch and the conversion. And now back to the running game and Woody Marks. Yeah, watch seven. here. They're going to have Dylan Johnson be a lead blocker right up here, which means they get an extra double team. You see that two double teams at the point of attack, as opposed to one running back in. A lot of times against drop eight, it kind of ends up just being one on one blocking across the board. Tough to be physical, tough to get a lot of push. Love what Mississippi State's doing with two running back sets. 
really only started the last three or four games. Johnson got banged up earlier in the game, had to go to the injury tent for a moment. And we got more yellow markers. Josiah Hayes, perhaps, up front for Kentucky. Offside on the defense, number 99 with contact. Five yard lead. That yardage will result in a first down. Well, this is a Mississippi State team that is fifth in the country in passing. The, the running game had been just kind of a throwaway until about the Kentucky game last year. Yeah. That's when they decided that hey, you're going to go drop eight every play, give us five man boxes. We're just going to run it. And they've been more successful. Rodgers looking all over the field and has nowhere to go with it. Cole, you talked with Mike Leach before the game. He seems to think that on any given play, there is always a Mississippi State receiver open. Yeah, I spoke to Chris Hatcher, the head coach of the Sanford Bulldogs in Birmingham, Alabama. He played for Coach Leach. He coached with Leach, served as his offensive coordinator for Hal Mummy as well. He said the hardest thing about playing for Coach Leach in film sessions, no matter what the play, no matter what the coverage, no matter what happened, he always believes the receiver's open. That's his philosophy. There's someone open on every play. And if you start to read one way and the guy on the opposite end was open, he'll ask you why you didn't start to read on the opposite side. Second and eight. And past midfield is Woody Marks. That'll set up third and a couple. Leach has been going for it a lot on fourth down this season as well, even in their own territory. There's an injured Mississippi State player. Mississippi State player. But I wonder if they wouldn't have two downs to pick this up. This is LaQuinston Sharp. Number 63, LaQuinston Sharp for Mississippi State. And the state center, the only returner in the same position on the O-line from last year. This would be a key loss for the Bulldogs. Sharp still being looked at, and this is where the injury occurred to the right knee. Back in a moment. So third and three after LaQuince and Sharp left the field for Mississippi State. Stephen Lasoya now handling the center duties. Had a major shuffle on the line. Rodgers fires complete for a first down. That's Caleb Ducky. And Cole, they had to shuffle everybody up front. Uh, so Dollar Bill Johnson comes in, goes to left guard. Nick Jones stays out at left guard. I thought Cole Smith might move down to center. He's got reps there, but he stays at right guard as well. So multiple changes up front for State. Quatravius Johnson hadn't played the last two games. Tackled by Trey. Into the ground game and Dylan Johnson. And he is stopped after a gain of one. I'll tell you this, the, the advantage of not sliding Cole Smith down, who has reps center before. If you watch this team and you study this offensive line on film, he actually helps a lot up front with the communication. When Sharp's looking around or looking back at the quarterback, you can see Cole Smith directing traffic, giving some signals, letting LeQuinston Sharp know if the front had changed or not previously. So he's still a big help communicating, even though. So it's LaSoya at center. He's the backup center, but had been at left guard. Rogers helping him out. Dumps it out of the backfield to Dylan Johnson, and he gets spun out of bounds by DeAndre Square. Eight of six. Great little play to set up a third and manageable. One of the things talking to Will Rogers, year three in the system, the air raid, what changes? He's so much more focused pre-snap on down and distance. What do we need to get ourselves in more manageable situations? So instead of looking downfield on a second long, Dump it off, pick up four or five, set yourself up for a third and medium to short, something easier to pick up. He had a slow start, found his rhythm now, third of four. Clock at one. And the out route is good for a gain of five and a first down. Found Rufus Harvey for the first time tonight. And a great little protection adjustment there by Will Rogers and finding his quick option out of an empty protection. He's got the ability to check any play from goal line to goal line Mike Leach has said so you're going to see a lot more verbal and nonverbal communication as he checks run plays protections routes. 
just like he did on that last play. Check into a quick Omaha, quick out on the slot to pick up the first down. Tenth play of the drive for State. Looking for a screen, and the block not quite there for Ducking, who only found two. So this big shuffled offensive line, Cole, but we don't expect Brad White necessarily to attack any of the soft spots, huh? Well, we asked Brad White yesterday because you've got a couple guys that have played out of position different times this year. Will you attack a certain spot, a certain weakness if you see it? And he said, you can attack a weak link, but if you do, it has to be within the scheme. So he didn't feel like he was going to make too many adjustments directed at one individual time. The run on second and eight. And what a job by the Kentucky defensive line. That's one of the things Brad White talked about. If we can win up front, then we can slow down that run game even if we are in coverage. And a great job with a little run slant there. They slant it to the field, right into the direction of the run. Setting up a really big third and long. Third and long, Kentucky brought pressure. Looks like they're going to bring four play coverage here. And they show late. Here comes safety blitz coming. Rodgers rolling on the run will throw it away. Jordan Lovett came flying in to set the clock for Rodgers and get it moving. Boy, this one rolled really late. Great job by Brad White. Watch all these guys that late came up on the line of scrimmage. It first looked like four. We're going to rush, so Will Rogers didn't have time to change the protection, did the best he could to escape, throw the ball away, but a great play design to dial up pressure again on a third down by Brad White. Kicking game has been inconsistent for State. This will be a 48-yard attempt for Massimo Biscardi. And that one will punch through, and Mississippi State took a while to get there. Finally on the scoreboard, 3-0. We'll talk more about this air raid. We'll talk Kentucky football history and maybe a couple Mike Leach stories. Tim Couch will join us on the other side. Well, you may know this already, but Mike Leach's roots in the air raid go back to Valdosta State, Kentucky, uh, Iowa Wesleyan before that. But then here in Lexington and his quarterback, first time out with Hal Mummy's head coach, is Tim Couch on your way to being a first round pick. What, what was it like for you when the air raid was first introduced? It, it was great. You know, I, it was very similar to what I was doing when I was in high school, actually, you know, with, with the spread, the four or five wide receivers. So I was really relieved to get the air raid because my freshman year under Bill Curry, I was running the option. And you want to talk about some ugly football? Watch me run the option. and You'd be like, this guy can't play at all. So. You're like, wait a minute, I get to throw it every down, <laughs> yeah, put up like, numbers? Oh, like, absolutely, man. Put me in the shotgun. Let's throw it. I, I'm all in on that. You know, we've talked a lot about Will Levis, his transition into the NFL. Will Rogers as well gets tagged as a system quarterback a lot. What was the transition like going from from the air raid system to maybe what seemingly is more complex NFL system was it a big learning curve it was you know in the air raid we didn't even have a playbook per se and uh, so when I get to the NFL they hand me a playbook you know this thick and you're trying to learn a lot more stuff really the biggest difference for me was is changing protections and doing those kind of things at the line of scrimmage here in the air raid things were kind of built in in this system you know okay if this guy comes I'm just throwing hot we didn't do a lot of sliding protections and, and doing all that kind of stuff so there was no a little playbook? adjustment at the line so yeah, no we had no playbook so you know what's it's as esoteric as Mike Leach is I feel like he's more refined now because he's been a head coach for a number of years. What was Mike Leach like back in that day? Uh, he was pretty much the same guy. You know, Mike was always the kind of guy, you know, I would go in and talk football with him, and he would talk about everything but football. Right. You want to talk about wars and histories and pirates and everything else. I'm like, man, I just want to talk about the game coming out. <laughs> what am I supposed to do on this play here? Right, exactly. Well, if you were to watch that movie, I told you. <laughs> Levis comes up throwing a fine Barry on Brad. Right, Tim, you know Will Levis really well. You've gotten to know him uh, since he's been here. How would you describe his development as a quarterback? 
Uh, it's been great to see. You know, last year he had moments and showed flashes of brilliance, but there were some ups and some downs, you know, turning the football over a little bit, uh, little issues with some accuracy and things like yeah. that. But this year, he's really taken a big jump, and, you know, he put a lot of hard work in in the offseason. He's in such command and control of this offense now, and I love seeing what he's doing out there. The guy's a competitor, man. He's as tough as it gets, and, uh, you know, I, I would take that guy over anyone in the country. Rodriguez with the spin move will carry this for the first down. We're talking with Mark Stoops yesterday, and he said, listen, there are some great quarterbacks in this country, but relative to where he is doing this, where Will Levis is accomplishing all of these numbers and where he's going to go in the draft, you think it, it makes a difference that he's here at Kentucky versus, say, Ohio State and how he gets judged? I, I would think so. You know, you're talking about an offensive line that's had some struggles early this season. Yeah. He's throwing to a couple freshman wide receivers, and the guy just stands in there and takes the punishment. He's, he's a big dude. He stands in the pocket. Uh, he's not afraid of contact. Obviously, he's got one of the biggest arms in all of college football, and uh, I think he's doing a great job, and I think it does make a difference that he's putting up the type of numbers here at Kentucky instead of, you know, maybe being out of Alabama or Ohio State or, or one of those type of schools. Five for Rodriguez. Yes. All right, who's the, uh, who's the long driver out of these two? Uh, Will hits it a long way. I was probably a little more consistent. He's just kind of getting into golf a little bit. Uh, but that, that was a great day. We had talked about getting together and playing some golf uh, for a while now just to get the opportunity to get out there and just uh, just the two of us to play a little golf was, was a lot of fun. We need to get back in the gym. Tom. <laughs> <laughs> <'Cause don't>, uh, <laughs> Tim and Will don't miss a day in the gym, that's for sure. <laughs> On second down, just short of the marker. Cole was talking to Mike Leach before the game. And this theory that in his offense, he believes someone is always open right. on every play. Was that told to you at the time, back in the day? Exactly the same thing. He says, you got to find the guy. You know, yeah. we're trusting you to find the right guy. There's someone open in this offense on every play. You just got to find him and go to the right place with it. And, you know, this offense is, is about getting rid of the football quickly, being accurate in the short to intermediate game, and letting guys run after the catch. And if you got a quarterback who can do that, like Will Rogers can do for Mississippi State now, you see this offense really clicking. And, you know, you just got to be to defend it. You got to play really good. Uh, on defense as, as far as coming up and being a sure tackler and getting a little pressure on the quarterback as well. Levis with another QB sink. I don't know if that left foot is bothering him or not, but on those types of plays, it's looked good tonight. Yeah, and he's taken some hits. He's had to scramble a few times, but haven't seen him grimace, haven't seen him. I don't think he's as explosive maybe as he usually is, but doesn't seem to be a huge issue, which is a breath of fresh air for Kentucky, and maybe he'll open it up a little bit more. Movement for Zach Arnett's defense. Shades of Jolie Dunn back in the day. And here's Rodriguez. Speaking of Mike Leach, here he was pregame on the field with Cole. Do you have a receiver open on every play? I hope so. We should. We should by process of elimination. But generally, on the, rare that. on the rare occasion that we don't, uh, there's definitely some, uh, some heat delivered, you know. Okay. All right. But, you know, got to find them quick enough, too, you know. Absolutely. So, yeah. That's the Mike Leach you know? That's the Mike Leach I know. He hasn't changed a bit since 1997. <laughs> <laughs> Second and nine now. And they'll go straight ahead with some window dressing. Rodriguez running through, dudes. And it's a Kentucky first down. Tim, break down this replay for us. Yeah, Kentucky, you know, we've been known for running the football here over the last several years and starting to get it going. Chris Rodriguez back into the lineup, and he's made a huge difference over the last couple games. He's just such a powerful runner, always falling forward, a big physical guy, and this is what he brings to the table and brings this offense. It can be, it can be messy, right? It doesn't have to right. be blocked exactly. perfectly, which is what Kentucky needs in this run game. He'll make you right by running through an arm tackle and falling forward for two or three extra yards. Averaging over five yards a carry, and... It's the eighth play of this drive. Rodriguez again. You know, Tim Couch should be good at breaking down plays. Not only was he the first pick in the draft, but the guy has worked for years in television. In fact, years ago when you were at Fox Sports South in Atlanta, you won an Emmy that they delivered to my house. <laughs> I opened I don't know how, how that happened. I have no idea. I opened up the box. And, hey, look at uh, I scratch that out to the local yeah. trophy shop and say, hey, can you put a right. nameplate on there? Scratch that out, yeah. So did you send it to me? How did I it get it? It eventually got to you. Yeah, yeah. I had it sent Did it, it back. though? Can we clear the air? I do have it in okay. my house. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. I should have kept it. <laughs> it's second and 12 now for Will Levis in Kentucky. What makes him a quarterback that scouts love? 
I think just all the things you look at, number one for me would be his competitiveness. The guy is just out there. He plays the game almost like a linebacker. But, you know, as far as all the physical traits, he has everything you look for, the size, the ability to run and extend plays, the arm to push it down the field, and he's an outstanding leader. Guys really respond to him. And, uh, you know, he, he just has everything you're looking for at that quarterback position. You put up some numbers in your day. We had a chance to spend some time with how mommy he's coaching the XFL last time we saw him he's happy to just have a, a bourbon in the whirlpool and call out simple plays <laughs> like six right. 95 <laughs> 90 so I asked him I yeah. said what well, what is six it seems like a very simple play call he goes well that's all four verts that's go four get vert a touchdown six is four verticals go get it uh, 95 is a, a wide cross one of the staples in this offense and at all the all the offenses I've been in over the last 20 years I still remember the play calls and the reads in this offense it was uh, you know it's, it's amazing to see when we put this offense in in 1997 and, and what, the, the way it's still around now you know yeah. the, I didn't realize the impact it was going to have it's still spread across college football made its way into the NFL as well so it's pretty cool to kind of be on the ground floor of that thing and just be around such innovative guys who were so forward thinking like coach Mummy and coach Leach were all the way back in 97. A heck of a coaching tree they're gonna leave the offense on the field here because the kicking game for Kentucky has been just as adventurous as States has been. What do you like here Jordan. By fourth and eight a tough spot I would find. Your playmaker Barry on Brown is at the bottom of the screen right right now he's going to get man coverage on the outside if you want it. Problem is Mississippi State was going to dial up some pressure there. Fourth and eight when we return uh, you're not too busy stick around. Yeah, stick around. Uh, we'll talk about the impact of the air raid when we return in Kentucky looking at a big fourth down here at Kroger Field. Time report coming up. We will show you how Tennessee got it done against Alabama. KJ Jefferson back. You could certainly tell Ole Miss running wild. Nobody running wild in this. How about game. on the day when every SEC team was scoring? We're at a three nothing game here right now. Yeah, kind of crazy. Kentucky with a few key missteps with that fumble, that punt return, but uh, Chris Rodriguez is running well. Defensive battle, and I love it. <laughs> you will see it shortly, guys. Well, right, catch trying to get some points, fellas. 51-yard field goal attempt for Matt Ruffalo. As long this year as 50. Kicking game has been an adventure. This one drifting and it goes wide in a missed opportunity on fourth down. And so Kentucky, after that long drive, ends up with nothing in a three-nothing game. Mark Soup said, "What? What do you want me to tell the guys? I just tell them kick it through the uprights." That simple, right? Yeah, it should be that simple. It, Air Raid seems to be a simple offense, right? Well, Al Mummy, towel around his neck, and Mike Leach have left a lasting impact on the college game. They take off from Bluegrass Airport. You never know where you end up. Well, Mike Leach left here, went to Norman on a coaching staff that was absolutely loaded. OC there. The, that was really the start of the Air Raid spread. Texas Tech and a stopover in Washington State. Now back down to the SEC the coaching tree is really impressive from all of that and that's complete to the perimeter so what is the first thing Will Rogers is looking for when he comes to the line running the air raid? Uh, you're finding the safeties. You know, when you come up to the line, you always want to find the safety, see their depth, where they are located to the hash. Uh, you know, it kind of gives you a feel for if they're going to be rolling, if a guy's coming down, where the blitz is coming from. So he's always finding those safeties and then kind of getting into his offense from there. 9 of 13. Rogers finally got it going on the last drive. Was able to find his running back again. We talk about the influence that Air Raid has had in the coaching tree. Guys that have now taken over their own jobs over the number of years. Marvin Gino was one of the first from Oklahoma to Kansas. And now look at this, guys. Uh, that guy Heupel. Well, oh, he got a pretty yeah. big one today, huh? 52 on Bama. Most oh, scored impressive. against Bama since 1907. And then the air raid making it into the NFL as well. Tim, thanks for dropping by, man. Really appreciate it. I really it. enjoyed it, guys. Thank yeah. you so much for having me. Jordan, good to see you again. Too. Tim Couch has run the air raid. Got a chance to talk about it with him and a former Kentucky quarterback. Hoping the Cats can find some points. Mike Leach's offense held to just a field goal here early on. Second and four for Mississippi State. Will Rogers now 10 of 14 through the air. Pass tipped and incomplete. Two years ago, Mississippi State came in here 
and managed only two points on his safety one of the few times only eight times in Mike Leach's head coaching career his offense was held without a touchdown. They harassed State that night into six picks including one on a long return by Josh Pascal current Detroit Lion who's in the building tonight. Third down four. And there's the tight end. And well, Austin Williams, where's the tight end's number? My mind, but that guy is all over the place. It's a gain of nine. They took away the running back, and Williams was just sitting and waiting. Yeah, just a little mesh concept. It's a staple of the air raid. And Williams did a great job of seeing a man in front and sitting right down for Will Rogers to find him. That one is tipped, and Williams still got it. Or did he? Came out at the end, incomplete. Derek Jackson got his paw on it. Kentucky defense is doing a really good job of closing these windows, limiting some big plays. And talking to Brad White in reviewing the tape last year, he said, Our guys just drifted too much. They got to their depth and they kept gaining depth. He's like, No, no, get to your depth, get your eyes on the quarterback, and be ready to make a break on the ball or rally to tackle. Kentucky's done a really good job of holding their depth, getting eyes on the quarterback, and closing those passing windows. Another tip, and that one is incomplete again. Now third and ten. It's a great job by Will Rogers. I know the ball was tipped, but this is the development maturation. See him pointing outside. He goes, hey, they're bringing that corner blitz again. He's telling his running back, got to get out there. Tries to throw quick. Kentucky does a great job of getting their hands up. This is the chess match. Brad White and Will Rogers are in right now. And yeah, flag down never got started, and Rogers was saying, Full hey, get off me. On the offense, number 66. That's a five-yard penalty. Still third down. Simulated pressure again. Bringing pressure. I'm not sure if it was simulated there, dropping off or not, but Brad White is not sitting back. In drop eight and saying we're just going to play small ball let you play small ball here we're going to try to make tackles he's forcing the issue and I think a lot of times as a coordinator against the air raid you get passive you sit back okay here's what we got to do not tonight Kentucky is bringing heat and they are really affecting this Mississippi State protection and offense they're not in rhythm right now minute seven left in the half Rodgers to his running back, Woody Marks. That'll bring up Fort Town, Carrington Valentine with the stop after a seven. Offense will stay on the field for Mississippi State. State's got a couple timeouts. 50 seconds left in the half. And while we have a moment, let's get it to Laura Rutledge and our friends at Academy Sports. Fourth and eight at Kroger Field. Mike Leach talking about it with Will Rogers, their kicker. Massimo Biscardi, who has taken over for Ben Rabin, hit from 48 for the game's lone points. State manages three in the second half against LSU for a lone loss of the season. Looks like they're going to keep the offense on the field. Protection's going to be the issue here, right? Last couple, third and fourth and longs. Brad White's dialed up pressure. Two safety shell right now. Let's see if they roll to something late. And I'd expect some crossing routes by Mississippi State with the tight splits you see at the top of the screen right here. So buy some more time for Will Rogers. A play clock wasn't reset. Please reset the game oh, clock. Me, the game one clock start of one zero two and start the game clock on my ready for play signal. Fourth down eight. See if they get to these crossing routes here. Mm -hmm. 
the game clock on the scoreboard jumbotron is incorrect and not working. However, the in-house game clock is correct. Please reset the game clock to 102. We will start the game clock on my signal. The game clock on the banners around the stadium are correct. Does that change Will Rogers' sight line? Uh, not really. He's looking at play clock. I mean, yeah, I guess you are looking at the jumbo, but you still got a timeout in the pocket. Got plenty of time. It's fourth down. If you pick this one up, you can get aware of the play clock here, but. It is right inside the building, just not on the big scoreboard. Fourth and eight. Rodgers incomplete. And a turnover on downs. We give it back to Kentucky. This is great coverage on the back end there. Nowhere to go with the ball. Well, it looks like Brad White has figured something out once again against Mississippi State. They stymied this air raid first time they met up with Mike Leach in 2020, and it was a disaster of a game offensively. This is a possessions punt, punt, miss field goal, punt, pick, pick, downs, interception, punt, punt, pick, punt, pick, downs, interception, and even my home alarm system went off and knocked me off the air that night. That's right. Cole Kubelik had to do a little play by play. Yeah, that's not good, Tom. Usually uh, you're, you're trying to get first down to score points, but that was play by play wasn't good. No, no, no. Well, 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 we've been meaning to talk to you about that. You can grab your playbook and come up to the booth. <laughs> <laughs> Held to just a safety in that Kentucky win two years ago. Home team has won seven straight in this series. Levis backpedaling, lobs, and incomplete, but a flag. And an opportunity here for Kentucky to grab some yardage with 42 seconds left. It looked like Emmanuel Forbes in coverage. Holding on the defense number 13. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. A little inside release there, yeah. Boy, Forbes is so good in press coverage, too. He's a guy that's going to be. Playing at the next level as well. He's so long. Just listed at six foot, but we were down there on the field. I mean, he is long and lanky. He's great in press coverage with those long arms. That time, just a little too much of the jersey. One well, of the best in the country. Quick pass complete for a gain of nine to Rasan Lewis. 33 seconds in rolling. Cats have a pair of timeouts. Trying to get a score before the end of the half. Oh, another flag. State's been flagged four times. This will be the 10th penalty on Kentucky. Cats might want to use a timeout here. It's after the announcement. Ball, ball starts. The ball is set at a roll. number 62. That's a five-yard penalty. It remains second down. This penalty also carries a 10-second runoff. However, to avoid the runoff, Kentucky has elected to take a timeout. This is their second charge timeout of the half. This will be a 30-second timeout. Will Levis 9 for 11 tonight for 94 yards. Yeah, it's been a frustrating night though. Mississippi State has brought some pressure. You can see he's still not quite 100% with that turf toe. Trying to escape the pocket there, not with the same juice he's used to. And Mississippi State has condensed the pocket, got some hits on him. And really just a frustrating night all around for Mississippi State's offense, Kentucky's offense. Explosive plays have uh, been tough to come by. They fumbled it, have a missed field goal. And you could see with a couple of those plays, Levis's balance is being affected by his unwillingness or inability to put weight on the left foot. Yeah, and subconsciously, you know, the pain is there, and I've, I've had it. You get it injected before the game, but 
by the first middle of the first quarter, second quarter, it starts to wear off. I yeah. mean, you have some adrenaline, but every time you push off it explosively, that pain shoots again. So subconsciously, he's trying to avoid pressing off as much as possible. But that's why I want to see a little more of the quick passing game from the pocket. That last two plays ago or so is the first time we really saw them catch. Nice little route, get it out quickly. Here's Lewis. And the flag late. That was well past the banner on the sideline. To Cameron Richardson continued on the tackle. And that'll tack on 15. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, hit out of bounds on the defense number three. 15 yard penalty that carries an automatic first down. Just a little bit, a little bit too much there. I think he was trying to go after the ball. But you're about five yards out of bounds. You can uh, leave the ball where it is. Levis has time, and it is incomplete. But a flag down. Trying to find Dane Key Richardson with the coverage. Dane Key comes from an uber athletic family. Prior to the pass being thrown, holding on the defense number three. The two yard play from the previous spot, and that carries an automatic first down. Including his dad who played here, and an uncle who's a globetrotter. He said, I'm the best athlete. And I see Dane Key right here. This is your 50 50 guy. He's working on a little bit of a corner route. Called that a circus route inside release. Get back to the corner pylon. A little too much contact there, but it's a great ball. Throw it up to your 50 50 guy. If there wasn't a little interference there, you had a chance to make a play on it. It's 25 yards given up by Richardson in penalties in the last two plays. Four receivers to the right. And Levis with the quarterback run takes it to the 10. And a timeout taken with 14 seconds left on the clock. Boy, we asked Rich Gangarello, are you going to change the playbook? Does anything change with Will's injury? He said, nope. Well, there's your evidence. Four receivers to one side. They vacate a linebacker, so you have a light box. This is just a quarterback draw the entire way, but Levis doesn't even sell it. Doesn't need to, right? It's a light box. Attack it right away, pick up some yards, and get yourself in striking distance. Now, with 14 seconds left, they can take two shots to the end zone here. Coming up at the half, you can watch a live performance of the Wildcat Marching Band on SEC Network Plus. Start streaming now on the ESPN app. The average play takes about six seconds, so you have two opportunities here to take a shot into the end zone. No timeout, so you want to preserve the ability to kick a field goal, get some points here on the board before half, so everything's got to go into the end zone. And I would look at my matchup at the top of the screen, excuse me, at the bottom of the screen here with Dane Key working on Emmanuel Forbes. He's looking there and he will fire that direction, but incomplete. Pressure put Levis on his backside. That was your little fade stop to the pylon. We saw. It's interesting talking to Levis about it last week and, and the fade because you work on it hundreds of times in the offseason to run it three times during the season. And Bell, with nine seconds left, try to tie this thing up. That's interesting to me. Did you get time for two more? You get, yeah, I mean, you got time for one more play. Yeah. It's into the end zone, then you can kick it with three, two seconds left. 28 yard attempt for Ruffalo. Movement by State. The kick was good. Well, the five would give them a first down. The downs are irrelevant with the clock situation. And that's what's interesting here. They're going to bring the offense back out, but that's what you should have done already. He said, I'll take the points. They're going to take the points here? 
offside on the defense number 13. That penalty has been declined. The field goal is good. I, I just don't understand it, right? You have a third down. You had nine seconds left. A shot to the end zone, a jump ball to the end zone takes four or five seconds. Even if it took seven seconds, you got two seconds I, I to can, kick it on I can down. counter. Let's just play devil's advocate here that you have an offensive line that has struggled. The last fade he tried to run, he ended up backpedaling 15 yards. Okay, but I mean, Please that's, put that's, four seconds on the game clock. It did not start on the last play. Please reset the game clock to four seconds. Thank you. How about this idea? You've got at, at this point, take away the play. You've got three on the board. You got points on the board in a very low scoring game. Would you be willing to take them off to take a shot? Yes, but because I, you should have the first time. It was third down, nine seconds left. And remember, the average play is six seconds. A jump ball takes four or five seconds. Like you have a quarterback that is projected to go in the top ten. You got a big receiver that is talented. Just throw it up there, yeah. or if it's not clean, have him throw it ten rows into the end zone and then kick your chip shot field goal again. I, I get it. Points are points, and you're going to go to the locker room, and it's going to be tied up, but. As aggressive as they've been on multiple fourth downs tonight, that that to me is, I don't know. Kind of goes against what they've been doing. Yeah, yeah. But now they eight. have three missed field goals on the season. Yeah. End of the day, it's three-three. So I can be mad. I'm a quarterback up here. I want to, you know, uh, I would have loved to go for it down there. I'm sure Will would have too. But tie ball game. It was an ugly first half. Oh. Penalties and everything. So go to the locker room, make some corrections, come back out here and. Start all over. Well, Mississippi State needs to answer for the offensive line player. Remember, they lost their center, LaQuinston Sharp, in this first half and had to shuffle a bunch of guys around. And once again, the second time in three years, Brad White's defense doing a fantastic job. This was after Rodgers set an SEC record. For completion percentage last year. Completed 92.3% of his passes. The story tonight is at just 60% after a very slow start. Been sacked once, pressured numerous other times. A chance to hear what Mike Leach has to say about his offensive performance. Coach, how does losing a Quinston Sharp change the operation of your offense? What? Losing your center, how does it change the operation of your offense? Uh, it shouldn't very much. Just play with another center. The pocket is the fortress for your quarterback. How do you further fortify it in the second half? How do I what? How do you protect your quarterback better in the second half? Well, we just got a block. We're trying to make too much happen. Thanks, Coach. Simplicity for simplicity's sake. And a simple but ugly first half. Six points total in a top 25 matchup. Dari. Eight three. Kentucky three. Cats took a field goal at the end of the half. For more on that, here's Cole Kublick with head coach Mark Stoops. Coach, can you take me through the mindset there at the end of the half? Felt like you had time to run two plays. Chose to go ahead and take the field goal a little bit early. Uh, had a I, I, we had an opportunity to run one more play with nine seconds. We can't get two off and get the field goal, but I did have an opportunity to run one more. The way they played it, the, play, the uh, time before, the way they pressure, I didn't want to force it. I felt like we were behind most of the first half. To go in 3-3, we get the ball. I thought it was the smart decision because if you come away with nothing, it totally crushes your morale. Defensively, feels like you're having a lot of success with pressure, especially third level pressure. Corner safeties, do you have to stay that aggressive in the second half? Yeah, we got to continue to mix it up. I think we're playing good team defense. Um, guys are tackling well, not many yards after catch, and we got to continue to mix up looks. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. What do you think about that answer? I mean, I understand, look, you get the ball after half, it can be 3-3, but also you got an NFL caliber, possible top 10 quarterback. If you see pressure, chuck it into the stands. If not, you maybe have an opportunity to get six or seven. So either way, 3-3, three, three, here we go. Nation's best kickoff returner, Barry on Brown, who had a punt return touchdown waved off after a holding penalty in the first half. Trying to give the Cats a spark. And won't have a chance right here. So we start the second half 3-3, a low-scoring game 
either offense able to find its rhythm. Some long drives for Kentucky, but they came up empty. Yeah, it's a great break for all of you that watch Alabama, Tennessee, and you were just tired of scoring. Here we go. That's what we're here for. Um, you know, it was interesting. Explosive plays were not there for either team. I think it was the pressure on both sides. Kentucky brought a ton of pressure, held Mississippi State to under 100 yards. Not used to seeing that. And Kentucky started to get that run game going a little bit, but no play actions, no big plays off that either. So see how both teams adjust. You want to appeal to those who take the under? Yes. I don't like hanging out with those people. Oh, Here's wow. Chris Rodriguez up the middle to Kentucky first down. That's a great start. You can feel Chris Rodriguez getting his legs back. Right, last week it was a different ball game with Kaya Sharon in there. Now with Will Levis, obviously much more balanced. The defense has to respect that. You're starting to see some of those runs spit, and the blocking's starting to come along and be more consistent in front of him. Here's Brown, the wide receiver screen. And he takes it for a gain of four. Rodriguez came back for the Ole Miss game, and that was a game marred by Kentucky mistakes, including a pair of turnovers in the red zone. And Mark Soup said, you know, if we would have had him for that, maybe we'd get a little bit more consistency in that Ole Miss game, and if they win that one, you're looking at a different scenario. Jagger Burton is the injured Kentucky Wildcat. Four-star recruit, number one prospect in the state, coming out of Frederick Douglass, where he played with Dane Key a couple years ago. It's the second time tonight we've seen an offensive lineman get a little friendly fire from behind. Mississippi State has already lost LaQuinston Sharp. But when Mike Leach talked with Cole about it going to break, he said, well, we just have to find another center. A lot of injuries piling up on both sides, Cole. Yeah, right tackle Jeremy Flax is also going to be unavailable for the second half of the Wildcats' lower extremity injury. He also will not turn. So the depth for this Kentucky offensive line, Tom, going to be tested here in the second half. Well, that's a pretty good sign that Burton is able to jog to the sideline. Get that brace fixed and might be right back out there. Let's see. Will Levis 11 of 14 tonight. Good grab, but it's separated from the ball on a big hit. Jalen Green, or pardon me, Jackie Matthews, excuse me, with the hit to separate Brown from the ball. Nice little quick out here by Brown. Ball just a hair high. Again, some of those short throws we talked about, if there is an inconsistency in Will's game, it's some of those type of throws. But man, late in the game against Ole Miss, when they were driving, he was on oh, yeah. point with velocity. Here comes pressure. Levis heaves it. Brown with a flat. Still hauled it in. And Levis is injured. Levis tried to get up, went right back to a knee. Pass interference on the defense number eight. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is a first down. And they go right to the left shoulder of Will Levis, who is grimacing in pain. For at least a play, the Cats are going to have to turn to Kaya Sharon, who got to start last week. Levis was able to complete the pass, but he paid the price. And already hobbled with that foot injury. Kentucky's fan base holding their collective breath after that hard hit on Levis. This is the hit. Took Will Levis out of this game, falling on his left shoulder. Moments ago, he ran to the Kentucky locker room, tried to get it looked at. His mother, Beth, 
frustrated. And you can understand that guy Sharon hands it off to Chris Rodriguez and loses a yard. Sharon last week got his first career start. Went 15 of 27 for 178, two touchdowns and a pick. And they learned early on that they were going to have to minimize the plate call. Absolutely. The field shrinks a little bit vertically, right? Last week, they didn't push the ball downfield. So now, Zach Garnett and this Mississippi State defense can get a little more box heavy, anticipate the run, anticipate some quick perimeter throws. But you're not going to see many, if any, high safeties. As you see here, everybody within 10 yards. Sharon has to pull it down and open receiver means just two yards. That's Jordan Dingle. Zach Garnett kind of backing off there as well. Guys, remember he told us when we met with him, I need to just sometimes sit back, call base defense, let my players play. We've got a veteran group. Leadership is not an issue. The veterans take care of the motivation for us. Saw right there, just kind of go to a four down front, play coverage off a little bit, let your football players play. You said veteran Cole. I remember looking at my play sheet for the first time this week, going grad, senior, senior, grad, yeah. junior, grad. See, I mean, there was there's one sophomore in the two deep. Here's that wide receiver screen as Barry on Brown and Brown got smoked. He stopped short. Emmanuel Forbes brought him down. And they'll bring out the kicking team to try and take the first lead of the night for the Cats. The pitching duel continues. 37 yard attempt for Ruffalo. Just snuck it in. Ruffalo trying to find some confidence and momentum in this Kentucky kicking game. The last two drives for Kentucky have ended with a three. Let's take a look at Fansville. Brought to you by Dr. Pepper. How about this? Dr. Pepper Luge? That's its design. Well, don't get it up the nose. That's you're gonna regret that. <laughs> you ever done an ice luge? Is that what that's called? It is now. Yeah. No, I have never. Doubt it. What about a keg stand? Have you done a keg stand? Because I never have. Actually, this conversation oh, really? came up the other day. Yeah. Uh, and I went to junior college. <laughs> well, you guys only had pony cakes. You didn't answer the question. Yeah. Yeah. My Bro. Here, hold my legs. It's over at the Pike House, huh? <laughs> Watching the offensive performances in the first half, I did one at the break. <laughs> I just shotgunned a Red Bull. It's been a long day. Now it's a party. No return for State. <laughs> How about the legend of Will Rogers? Never met a man I didn't like. A one famous actor and the other on his way to becoming a famous football player if he's not there already. They had to see Paris. Well, you have to see Will Rogers. 505 completions last season. Steamboat round the bend. And a full head of seam, an SEC record in career completions. Broke Aaron Murray's record and did it. In a couple dozen fewer games. A little bit of running for Caleb Ducking now. Turns it into a 12 yard gain. Kind of waddled through the first half, didn't they? An unimpressive couple of quarters. Held to just three points for the second time this season and a half. Previous was the no show against LSU. Here's Woody Marks, and he's got a first down. Well, it was interesting talking to Will Rogers about what, what gives this air raid, what gives your offense trouble. And he's like, well, a four down front with an outside linebacker that can be a rush in, get out to the quarterback, but also drop into coverage. Gives this offense a little trouble. 
Time to get open for Austin Williams, who takes it inside the 30. Quarterback's roommate, usually their favorite target. That's yeah, nice deep crosser. That route has not been there at all tonight. Really struggled with those mess co mesh concepts. Kentucky again did a really good job over the middle. Their linebackers in that second level. But Kentucky presents some problems, right? They've done a lot of simulated pressure, some four man, some blitzes as well. I think Brad White's done a great job of mixing it up. Carrington Valentine is the injured Kentucky defensive back. He was in on the tackle. Out of Archbishop Moeller, power program in Cincinnati. So Woody Marks out of the backfield. And he takes it inside the 10. Gain of 19. Boy, Will Rogers did a great job of looking left the entire time, getting the linebacker's second level to drift with his eyes, and then quickly coming back to the right to the running back with a lot of green grass. Last year, Marks had more catches in college football than any other running back. Half of his touches this year have come on receptions. Valentine back in the game at corner. Well, Rodgers pleading his case. The ruling on the field is a catch for a first down. That play is under review. Rodgers wanted to get the snap off and get going. This time in the red zone for Mississippi State tonight. In addition, we're told that the replay booth is looking at a possible targeting violation on this. It would come right there from Kedron Smith. Well, I mean, first glance looks like a football play and you start to peel back the layers and obviously being tackled marks is somewhat of a defenseless guy there with him coming at a different angle. I'm not sure if that's what they're looking like, you know, as he's turned there, but he's a ball carrier. Let's start with this. If he's not defenseless, is that targeting? No. Yeah. And not to as me. a ball carrier. Yeah. That usually yeah. takes that element out of it. Hundred percent. As a ball carrier, it has to be crowned of the helmet. The previous play was under review for a possible targeting. After review, there is no foul for targeting. First down. And, and to me, that that had to be kind of what they wanted to look at at first glance. Was he yeah. ball carrier, right? But as you're getting tackled, there is an element of being defenseless to someone as you're going down. I think that's maybe what they wanted to see, but. Good job quickly making the decision moving on. Rogers thought they lost an advantage with the tempo. Let's see if they can find it again. State has been magnificent in the red zone this season, second in the country, 19 of 21. And just a hair behind Woody Marks, kind of how the game started with Will Rogers. A couple opportunities with running backs in the flat and just either the timing was off or his aim was off. It's a really good job by Kentucky's defensive line of, of realizing once Rodgers starts to drift in the pocket, he's looking for that dump off. They're getting hands up in lanes. They're getting tall. They're forcing Rodgers to try to throw around big bodies and not successful a few times, like you mentioned, trying to dump it down to the running backs. 14 consecutive red zone touchdowns for Mississippi State. Here's Marks, and he is stretched, but just short. It'll be inside the one and set up third and goal. Yeah. 
Marks hit in the backfield. Just back to the line of scrimmage. And in a 6-3 game, Saint will have a chance to chip shot to tie it. Justin Rogers playing the nose. Just absolutely snuck right through there. Mike Leach says forget about the tie. We need six to leave the offense on the field. To the end zone, Williams, touchdown, Mississippi State. What a huge play for the Bulldogs, and Williams with his fourth touchdown of the season. Boy, last year, Williams was such a huge part of this offense. This year, really that, that third, sometimes fourth guy, but the relationship there with Will Rogers, the chemistry they have. One of the reasons they went for it is the kicking game has missed four extra points this season, including two by Biscardi. He knocks that one through, and our first touchdown of the game comes into the third quarter, but here's a developing story. Will Levis back on the field for Kentucky. After Will Rogers throws for his first touchdown, it came on a fourth and goal from the one, his 23rd passing touchdown of the season. Wow, they hang half a hundred in Provo. That's impressive. Meanwhile, Will Rogers has tied Dak Prescott career passing touchdowns in state history. A really good company. Just getting his exercise in. Easy day at the office. Hang time on the kick. It's a short. Barry on Brown. And he takes it out to the 25 yard line. So Will Levis is back. Left to the locker room after this. Not just a hard hit, but the way he hit the ground on the left shoulder was cause for concern. Came out of the game. Ran himself into the locker room as mom Beth frustrated upset worried And Levis has been playing hurt all season we we'll back under center to take the snap here What a tough guy at the finger Situation the toe now a shoulder Here's Chris Rodriguez That's a first down yeah Levis injured on the safety against Ole Miss, injured the foot and had a finger point at a 60 degree angle. Not ideal. What do you think? They just popped the shoulder back in place, perhaps? Possibly. Here's Rodriguez with a hurdle. Gain of eight. Boy, look at the push inside. I love the tempo here by Kentucky. Mississippi State is slow getting the call. Rodriguez again. Cole, I imagine there's nothing like momentum as an offensive line when you got a dude like Rodriguez running by you. There's no doubt he's a yardage adder, and we've seen a couple of backside runs. So duo essentially going away from the direction that the play is blocked, and then a nice cutback run by Rodriguez on that play as well. One of the things that has hampered Mississippi State's rush defense this season have been cutback runs. Texas A&M specifically a couple of weeks ago had a lot of success. Kentucky taking advantage of that here in the second half. Nathan Pickering is the injured Bulldog. Athletic training staff will tend to him midway through the third quarter. Well, Nathan Pickering headed to the injury tent, but a good sign after he took a shot on that previous play. He was able to walk in under his own power. Chris Rodriguez, fourth player in Kentucky history. Over the 3,000 yard mark for a guy who didn't play much first couple of years in a Kentucky uniform. Came in behind Benny Snell, a great team a couple of years ago, 2018. And look at this huge hole. Here he goes. Chris Rodriguez tracked down inside the 10. Richardson finally got him. It 
It's a 47 yard sprint. Well, Rich Gangarello said they want to get tight ends involved. Watch the tight end block here on the cutback by Chris Rodriguez. Seals the linebacker on the edge and opens the hole for Chris Rodriguez. And this run game is awake now. Rodriguez averaging over seven yards a carry. It's the longest run for Kentucky this season. 17th 100 yard rushing game. Nobody in the SEC currently has more. We go right back to the well. And Jet Johnson is there to meet him. Excuse me, that was Bookie Watson. And Watson chatting with Rodriguez. Yeah, that's a fun matchup. Here's Rodriguez against Bookie Watson. How do you get the name Bucky? Well, your dad's nickname is Big Bucky, and you come along. Well, it's pretty simple that you just take over the moniker. Probably a little Bucky for a while, but he's, he's not so little anymore. Now, when you grow to 6'2", 240, the little just falls right off. Back to it. Rodriguez to the three. And that'll set up third and goal. What I mean, this is four down territory here. Yeah. Mississippi State down on the other end. Going for the touchdown, picking it up on a fourth down. I feel like you hand the ball off two more times and you trust Chris Rodriguez to get, get you the three yards you need. Rodriguez stopped shy of the line of scrimmage by Bookie Watson. And that'll set up fourth and goal. Every play on this drive has gone into the belly of Chris Rodriguez. That's a good job by Bookie Watson slipping the block from the fullback. Yeah, I said fullback. Kentucky having three tight ends and a fullback in the game. This is where. If you weren't thinking handoff normally with the healthy Will Levis, you would think maybe a boot action, get him on the perimeter. Obviously, we saw him with the shoulder injury run back in the locker room. Let's see if they get him on the move or not. They've got Jaton McClain in at running back now. And so Levis will throw. Touchdown, Rashawn Lewis. Matt Ruffalo for the point after after an eight play 76 yard drive that was mostly Chris Rodriguez point after is good boy great job by Will Levis of waiting for the second window using a little shoulder roll to get Jet Johnson out of the way you're going to see Johnson right here he's going to work in this direction and Will Levis is going to keep moving him with his eyes watch the little shoulder roll that gets that action to open up that second window throw those are the little crumbs that NFL scouts love to see manipulation of the defense hanging in the pocket waiting for the second window to open up you see there the shoulder roll moves the linebacker opens up that second window slant and I love the trust Rich Scangarello has in his quarterback coming off a big injury ran to the locker room got his shoulder fixed up he's got a toe injury he still dials it up on fourth down and trusts him to make a big time throw first career touchdown for Rashawn Lewis that was an eight play 76 yard drive and Chris Rodriguez carried the mail seven for 73 on that drive. We might have five or six more touchdowns here in the second half, you know? Well, you said for all of you 
We're interested in the offense you got in Knoxville. Big chance for a return. Busting to the outside. And Tulu Griffin takes it past midfield. A flag on the play. Back in the 32. As it stands, a 58 yard return. During the return, holding on the receiving team number 85. 10 yard penalty. First down. So the pendulum of momentum swings back to Kentucky's side. Looked like State had grabbed the baton on Tulu Griffin's return, but the flag will back him up. See in the top of your screen right there. Great position, but just a half a second too long. Got to let him go a little earlier. Let's see if Mississippi State can build off the momentum on the intermediate passes they built last drive. Incomplete. Justin Robinson, the Georgia transfer, the intended receiver. Pressure coming. Rodgers quickly gets it off. This is good for a state first down for Jaden Wally. And he'll get it past midfield after all. 30 yard catch and run for Wally. Another pressure off the edge in this direction. And Will does a great job of throwing opposite pressure. You're going to get a movement from that backside linebacker. He's going to expand because pressure is coming from the opposite side and you replace with that slant route. On second and ten, Woody Marks. Eight of three. The run game not really getting any traction for Mississippi State, and I'll tell you why, because from Kentucky it's been a mixture of pressure and some four down fronts. And remember, Will Rogers was talking about that that drop eight when they give us a five man box. I'm going to check a pass to a run, but he hasn't had too many four or five man boxes that he sometimes gets in that drop eight. So Kentucky not giving Will Rogers clean looks before the ball snapped. And we got whistles and a flag. I let that play go for a minute, but it was a false start penalty. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense number 18. That's a five yard penalty, and it remains second down. That came from Robinson, the wide receiver. What a difference a year makes in this Mississippi State run game. Yeah, again, talking to the staff last year, a lot of just traditional three down drop eight, so the box was light. They're able to run the football a ton. This year, Brad White doing a really good job of mixing things up. Confusing Will Rogers a little bit at the line of scrimmage as you see here. Look at all these guys in and around the line of scrimmage. That's not your typical look of drop eight, even though they get to it right there. To the check down and a beautiful tackle on Simeon Price after a pickup of four. Eric Jackson came in for the stop. That was something that they didn't do a great job of last year. Square. They're immediately third down. <laughs> Movement on the left side. Will Rogers not happy. Ball start. In the offense, number 66. That's a five yard penalty. It remains third down. Nick Jones moved. And some of that offensive line shuffling. Nick Jones playing out there at left tackle, working on Jordan Wright, like Kentucky's best pass rusher. He's trying to get a little jump early. And now exactly where Kentucky wants to be. With Mississippi State facing a third and really long. Stage is three of eight on third down tonight. They bring four, almost got to him. 
And well short on the completion to Price. Picked up five. They will keep the offense on the field. It's not just that Leach is going for it more in kicking situations, but also punting situations, and now they'll make the shift. In fact, they've gone for it in their own territory. Three times, converted it twice. Archer Trafford. I think if that was fourth and five, he might go for that. Yeah. Fourth and four, but seven just a little unappetizing. Marion Brown set to receive. And that one will get inside the pylon for a touchback for the 45 yard punt. 45 seconds left in the third quarter. Here's our hometown connection brought to you by T Mobile. And we focus in on Dane Key, who was born right here in Lexington. His parents, Dante and Nicole. Dante. Linebacker here in Kentucky in the early 90s. There they are in signing day. Pick Kentucky over schools like Oregon, Michigan, and South Carolina. Was good in high school, good here too. Mom and dad in the stands. Go back to the Florida game. By the way, that was him in his dad's jersey as a kid. He told us yesterday, yeah, I had to I had to try to emulate the mean mugging for the camera. Because that picture's been around for a while. It was a big win on the recruiting trail for Mark Stoops, and here's Jatan McClain, and that's a big run on first down. Pick up a 15. Mom Nicole in the stands. Shane Beamer said, I had a feeling we're probably going to lose her, uh, lose Dane as a recruit when Mom broke her tailbone jumping onto the field after the Florida win last year. So that'll bring it into the third quarter. We head to the fourth in a series that started in 1914 and has just a one game difference in the win column. This one coming down to the final 15 minutes tonight on an SEC Saturday night. It's a series that never disappoints, but at least nobody's thrown a shoe tonight. Last three drives, Kentucky's found its rhythm. They go back to McLean. Gain of four. And as this run game continues to hit four, five, six yards each time, that, that play action game becomes a little enticing, right? And Dane Key's your 50 50 guy downfield, only two targets tonight. The one reception on that 31 yard pass down the sideline, the diving catch that yeah. he made. Sure love to see them give six another look. He's had a tough matchup tonight with Emmanuel Forbes, Mississippi State's best receiver, as you see them both at the bottom of the screen here. Yeah, best corner. Yeah, that's, a, that's what I meant. And here's McLean. Rodriguez getting a breather right now. McLean is able to pick up a few. That's a matchup, by the way, you might be seeing in Sundays for yes. a long time in a few years. Yes. Forbes is definitely bound for the NFL, one of the best in the country. And Dane Key is a true freshman. He sure looks like he'll be there someday, too, though. Third down three. Pressure coming from both linebackers. Levis tipped at the line of scrimmage. Incomplete. And there's a flag. Well, if it was tipped, let's see what the call is. Prior to the pass being thrown, holding on the defense, that's a 10-yard penalty from the previous spot, and it carries an automatic first down. You see this matchup right here. Yeah. yeah just the timing of that, the key, if it came after the pass was tipped. Yeah, Matthews grabs the, the hip there right before he even ever starts getting downfield, about six yards deep, so... Definitely happened there before the tip. Good call by the refs. 
seventh Kentucky possession all across midfield but only 13 points to show for it and Chris Rodriguez back on the field picks up one it's another meeting of him and Watson. Will Levis has an energy about him an intensity about him. Sometimes you got to be too much. Liam Collin at times last year, the previous offensive coordinator, tried to get him to loosen up, not carry so much weight on his shoulders. Cohen now the offensive coordinator with the Rams. On second and eight. Little touch to Rodriguez. And he's taken down at the line of scrimmage. And Bucky Watson again. It's like Bucky Watson has been in Chris Rodriguez's pocket all night. And he's been all over the field and that linebacker position when you're facing Kentucky is tough because of all the eye candy all the motions and misdirection that you get pre snap and post snap Watson and Jet Johnson Tyrus Weed, all those guys have done a really good job of not getting out of position and allowing any of those receivers to get the ball in space and catch and run really hasn't been an element tonight that Kentucky usually it's a lot of explosive plays on the catch and run. 15 tackles for Watson coming in hard. They got the levels, but he got it away. And Jatan McClain takes a sidearm pass inside the 20. There's a flag back in midfield. 32 yards if it stands. Levis took another hit. And he is wobbly. Hold holding on the defense. That penalty is declined. Play results in the first down. And talk about finding your window. Boy, blitz on the backside. We were just talking about Watson. He comes scraping off the side. And look at just the sidearm flick. And what a warrior. I mean, he has gotten beat up tonight. Been hit a bunch. Obviously came in with a toe injury. Dislocated finger a couple weeks ago, the shoulder that he ran to the locker room for. Is that ball going to tail or have movement when you drop down like that? Absolutely. Yeah, a little more sidearm you do, a little more that ball for a right handed quarterback tails from left to right. Timeout, Mississippi State. That is State their first choice. State uses the timeout. Out. A veritable offensive explosion here this half. Catch looking to add to it, up three. Tubby Smith once told me about Rajon Rondo that he complains when his teammates drop passes. I tell him you just have to make better passes. So Will Levis is a guy who's made better passes here in the second half. Yeah, so talented, under pressure most of the night. That throw that he hurt his shoulder on was a dime as well. Saw the touchdown throw manipulating the defense. His physical tools, his toughness, all on display tonight. Kentucky fans have been more nervous than a long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs tonight, but finally their offense has got it going. Dingle now the fullback in the eye formation. Here's Rodriguez, and he finds a hole. And he is in. A fantastic run for Rodriguez from 16 out. Real, recognize real, they say. Second only to the great Benny Snell and rushing touchdowns for Kentucky Wildcat. So Kentucky has seized momentum, but plenty of time left for the air raid. Here's Ruffalo. Good hold after a low snap. What a physical gap scheme run down kick out pull around and let Chris Rodriguez do the rest. <laughs> but she got banana phone. Tayshawn Manning's going to pull from the backside. You're going to get a kick out block and then watch number 10 Chauncey Magwood come to the screen at the very end right there. Just getting in front of the corner Emmanuel Forbes to make sure Rodriguez had that extra space to finish it off. And that five-time All-Star loves it. He, he wasn't filming ball. it. He gave up. You missed the touchdown, <laughs> yeah, Rajon. Come about, on. All about timing. 
Speaking of timing, yours was pretty good today. You're in Knoxville this morning, and our friends at Wheels Up, they traveled easier. They got you from Nation to the Bluegrass. In about 36 minutes. Quick little jump. Yeah, that ain't bad. Just, Just in time it. for a coffee and a breakfast burrito. Compliments of Cole. Yep. Or you. Not sure. No, Cole's our uh, oh, breakfast yeah. burrito guy. Hydration, applesauce for Chris Rodriguez. Mississippi State has been a comfort behind team. We know they have the firepower to get it done. How does a 10 point advantage impact the way Brad White would call the defense here early in the fourth quarter? I got all sorts of flags. As they sort this out, I think it gives Brad White an opportunity to. Be a little more conservative, get a little more into that traditional drop eight, but I, I would hesitate of, of doing that entirely because what has brought you success is some four down pass rush, some simulated pressures, and at times bringing full on blitzes After off the After the edge. play was over, personal foul on the kicking team number 20, unnecessary roughness. 15 yard penalty reinforced, carries a first down. They won one flag on the play. Four different guys in stripes pulled their flag out on that one. You got it, toss it. Yeah, I guess. Watch the middle of the screen here. Oh, you can't do that? I mean, first, second half penalty for the Cats after 10 in the first half. Let's see if Will Rogers can get it going. He has tied Dak Prescott for career touchdown passes in a Mississippi State uniform. He was nearly perfect against Kentucky in the game in Starkville last year. To the screen. And nobody picked up the block. Caleb Ducking taken down by Derek Jackson. I mean, it, it's truly been the difference. And, and Brad White said it. I'm going to repeat it. Wanted my linebackers and guys to stop drifting in drop eight. Last year, run after the catch. Running the football was so effective for Mississippi State because guys were getting too deep. Tonight, Kentucky has got to their depth, and then they've worked downhill to the ball carrier. Made their defense much more effective. Rodgers able to check down. Dylan Johnson puts his shoulder down. Gain of four. Mississippi State three of nine on third downs tonight. Four down territory likely, right? Their third down guy has really been Austin Williams tonight. Number 85 in the slot for Mississippi State right here. He's been working on a lot of crossing routes. Everybody was moving. Remember early in the South Carolina game, the Kentucky defense was simulating the snap with some move counts. They got away Ball with it twice. On the offense, number 66. That's a five-yard penalty, and it remains third down. It's a fifth state false start tonight. And that'll change things. coming from the edge. Rodgers has it batted down. Andrew Phillips got back there in a hurry. And they'll have to punt it away. Another third and long blitz from Brad White. The aggressiveness. You love to see it. And what makes this so difficult is Kentucky is waiting till the last second to trigger those blitzes. Yeah. They're not giving Will Rogers any indication before the snap that it's anything other than drop eight. And sometimes it's not just the quarterback, it's the wide receiver who needs to read that too. And he yeah. was waiting for Austin Williams to holler at his roommate thinking that he didn't run the right route. Those sight adjusts, right? Those built-in sight adjustments that need to be made on the fly. George Georgopoulos shanks the punt. Ooh. 
shake was an understatement. Is that for the brand? Not representing the brand. McAfee, turn away. Watch a future first rounder. Parents Beth and Mike Levis and now their son Evan has an awesome opportunity with a short field after a four yard punt. Levis, according to Mel Kuyper Jr., the number four overall prospect for the draft. And he is at a Warriors effort tonight after a shoulder injury in the first half. Army in the third quarter. Last three games, seven touchdowns, no picks for Levis. On the draw, here's Jatan McClain. Eight of two. This is where the big blue wall, this offensive line's got to take over the game. This is where, in years past, we've seen Kentucky thrive at yeah. just bleeding the clock. Committing to the run game, picking up three, four, five yards, and converting first downs. Made in the mold of that Youngstown native's personality. Three wide receivers in now. Lewis, Brown, and Key. And a drop by Lewis. And now third and eight. Also stops the clock. Yeah. I don't hate the call though, right? I mean, you got an NFL caliber quarterback. It's really an extension of the run. You'd like that to be 99.9 percent .9 completed. But exactly what Mississippi State wanted after a terrible punt, like you mentioned, four yards. See if they can get out of here in a three and out. Go back to a screen. This is Brown now, and Barry on Brown gets dragged down by Jet Johnson. Fourth and a couple. What do you do? You bring in Chris Rodriguez. Well, this could be the game with a two-score lead and a chance to pick up a first down and really get this thing late. Kentucky is three for three on fourth downs today. Levis to throw and he's picked up. Going the other way is Forbes. And indeed a pivotal play as Mississippi State steals one. And it's a 59-yard pick six on a perfect read by Forbes. Hello, momentum. It's wearing maroon. Emmanuel Forbes read this like a Dr. Seuss book. But hey, third little slip screen. You try to run in what, four plays or so? Yeah. I mean, you see it so many times. Eventually, he's just going to break on it. And that is a break on the football right there by Forbes. Man, I mean, you can always second guess calls as much as you want, but you mentioned that you bring Chris Rodriguez in. You're trying to bleed the clock a little bit. You decide for a high percentage screen, but can't account for Mississippi State's best player making a read like that. Point after is good by Biscardi. Man, oh man, we got a three point game thanks to a pick six by Emmanuel Forbes. 22nd career pick. Boy, two little quick slip screens to the left, and then that was the third one of that drive. And eventually, Forbes goes, man, I've seen this before. Two years ago, he led the country with three pick sixes. That is his fifth interception of the season. The feel of a game can change really yes. quickly, can't it? I mean, it, it felt like they were a yard and a half away from closing this one out. 
Fellas, remember what Emmanuel Forbes told us when we met with him earlier in the week, that he mentally eliminates routes based on down and distance, that he will go through certain routes that could possibly be run, he'll look at the sticks, and he'll begin to eliminate those, obviously to give him opportunities to jump one like that. And it's the visual cues, right? The short little motion there right before that snap cues that that corner playing outside leverage, playing off with eyes on the quarterback, that it could be a quick throw. Wow. The electric Barry on Brown back. And we'll have a chance here. This season, for every field goal and extra point made by participating universities, Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. You know, Cole, we met with Will Levis yesterday, and he talked about kind of his need for perfection and the inability to let bad plays go. He's got to let that one go. There's no doubt. Have to be just mentally have to move on. You can see him right there looking over at the coaching staff. Just kind of want a different play, uncertain, very tense moment right now for Will Lutz. They've got everybody stacked within five yards of the line of scrimmage. Cover zero. And he hands it off to Rodriguez. A little hurdle, he's able to pick up a dozen on first down. Well, another little gap scheme run. Pulling the backside guard around, kicking out with the tight end. Cole really leaned on that, that concept here in the second half. I think what's happening is we've seen this defense even itself out a little bit. You're not going with many odd looks, more four down fronts. That gap scheme able to let them get the edge, get the perimeter a little bit more. Chris Rodriguez had a little bit of a hitch in his giddy up trying to shuffle off the field after that run. I don't know if he's cramping, but he's having what seems like left leg issues. So Cavassi smoke in there now, and smoke is able to find the edge. He's got fresh legs and picks up six. Boy, all these tight formations for Kentucky. Multiple tight ends. The running game starting to go. This is where the play action thought starts to creep in. Kentucky really hasn't stretched the field vertically, but maybe one throw, the completion to Dane Key. At some point, you got to at least show it again. Yeah. Right, because Mississippi State getting really tight in around the line of scrimmage. I mean, sorry, Mississippi State. Maybe that's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> but you see everybody here but one player within about five yards of the line of scrimmage. You have as many voices in your head as I do. Smoke changes direction. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to look and operate the the telly here. What's going you know, on, come man? On. You kidding me? To quote the the great White Goodman, we're sweating like grease monkeys out here. I can't hold on to a ball. A little dodgeball coming at you here in the fourth quarter. Anyway, 6:44 left dodge, in the game. Dive, dip. You can dodge a wrench. You can dodge a ball. Third and four. Play clock at five. Levis has time. Let's it go. Caught. The Cal Crowdis. And Kentucky knocking on the door again. 50 yard game. Just the third catch of the season for another Frederick Douglass product from just down the road. This is such a good throw because Will Levis is forced because of pressure. As you can see, you can run it. You see the pressure come from the outside. Watch how early he's got to let that ball go. And the receivers expect it on the outside. But no one there. Will Levis has to throw it so early. Does a good job of not overthrowing it there. Throwing a friendly ball. So Crowdis can make a great adjustment. Here's Rodriguez. Churning, moving, shoving. He's in. Seven yard run. Two weeks ago, Kentucky was a top 10 program, and they gave the game away at Ole Miss with a multitude of mistakes in the red zone. 
And after the Levis pick six looked like they had given away momentum, they have seized it back. Thanks to the 50 yard pass to Crowdis. Play is under review. And then another Rodriguez run, and they will take a look and see if he broke the plane before his knee was down. Boy, what a statement drive there by Kentucky. Finished off with the physicality here. Chris Rodriguez. Some linemen helping him. Let's see if he crosses. Knee was down. At what point did that ball touching in the white line? Let's see if we can see when his knee goes down. Right there. I think the first angle is the best, and all it has to do is break the plane. Is any part of the ball which will be shielded a bit from this angle, but you can see where his upper body is. There's the knee down. Knee down there, ball over the goal line. Boy, Kentucky just kind of lulling Mississippi State to sleep there, right? After the interception, couple runs, runs. The shot play finally opens up, and the resiliency of Will Levis. And we've talked about it. Liam Cohen last year trying to get him to loosen up a little bit, not be so tight at times. Yeah. Big pressure moments. Boy, you throw an interception. No bigger pressure moment than that to come back with the type of throw he did to set up the short Chris Rodriguez run for the touchdown. That's big time. Rodriguez was over on the sideline having his calf iced up as well before he re-entered that series. So what we were talking about with potentially cramping up looked like he was on the sideline. There's another look is knee down. Lower leg down. Before the ball crosses. Right. One more little frame. John Bible is our replay official in the building tonight. Splitting hairs, right? I mean, did the, did the hair on his right knee touch a blade of grass and it was a quarter of an inch short? I don't think so. And here's the call. After review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. He there stands, not confirmed. But regardless, Kentucky gets a touchdown from Chris Rodriguez and a point after from stretching it to a 10 point lead. Here's Ruffalo. Chance poor the holder. Poor, good job handling that one again, and the kick is good enough. Catch by 10. Well, the pressure on Will Levis has been there all night. <laughs> Man, we need to get one of those get. Can we get a couple of those up here? Well, ice bags up here. How about the throw, giving his receiver time to adjust? And then the physicality of Chris Rodriguez after the interception stretching this lead back to 10 is Kentucky. All we need is somebody dressed like mayonnaise and coffee. The Will Levis Halloween costume will be complete. Where's Gwen Stefani when you need her? This game's B-A-N-A-N-A-S. No chance for a return, a wild one here. Great day in the league. Here's Dari. He scored that many points against Alabama in the SEC since 1907. Swanee. Shortly thereafter, Bama would have him kicked out of the league. Not entirely true. Play action, the pump fake, and check down to Marks. There's a gain of three. This Kentucky defense has been pretty good this season from a points allowed standpoint. Well, the last 10 to 24 or less. It's the longest streak since 1980. Second and seven. Rodgers on the run. They're all over Jane Wally. Big third down coming up. The MO has been to bring pressure. Feels like this one, maybe you don't bring pressure. 
Four minutes, 40 seconds left. Got a little bit of a cushion, but who am I to tell Brad White what to do? He's been dialing it up all night. Man, oh man. False start on the offense number zero. That's a five yard penalty and it remains down. That is the sixth time tonight for State. That time it was Ra Ra Thomas. A lot of procedural issues for Mississippi State. I think it partially has to do with a lot of Will Rogers changing protections and plays at the line of scrimmage. They're not just lining up and running things. State's been flagged 12 times tonight. Play clock is winding down. They get it off. Rodgers over the middle. Intercepted. DeAndre Square with the pick with four minutes to play. Well, what a play by Square. A seam route up the middle. He's just carrying it. And Will Rogers is at that point where he's looking up at the scoreboard knowing they're down two scores. He's got to try to make something happen. That is a forced throw. It was never there. Square was in position. Red Will Rogers' eyes carried the seam. It might as well have been the receiver there getting the hit right in the numbers. Will knows it. Just forced that one. It's been a frustrating day. He's been taking what Kentucky's been giving him. Short throws, dink and dunks, getting hit with pressure. Finally forced one. First pick of the season for Square. Back to Chris Rodriguez, who got the double ice bag rub down. He's able to pick up one. Chauncey Magwood, Chauncey Magwood, excuse me, and Emmanuel Forbes. Mixing it up. Forbes frustrated, but he had what looked like the play of the night for State, a 58 yard pick six on a third and short. After the play, we have offsetting dead ball penalties. After the play, personal foul on the defense number 13, personal foul on the offense number 10. Those penalties will offset, will be second down. Number 10 of the offense may remain in the game due to the helmet penalty. Chauncey Magwood and Emmanuel Forbes getting into it a little bit after the play here. Second and nine at the 31. Magwood has, oh. has had a physical night. It's And kind of threw his own helmet off there. You know, like a base runner in baseball, you know, making a play at home, throws his helmet yeah. off before he rounds third. Or like Bryce Harper heading into second. Yeah. You gotta show <laughs> yeah. off the locks. Kavashier smoke. No game. Oh man. State visibly frustrated. We'll see if it was the first or second offender who's going to get flagged this time. Emmanuel Forbes trying to get his guys together and calm them down. What do you think Mike Leach is thinking about right now? Balance. Just going to block. Just going just gonna block. That's been a frustrating night. Mississippi State. After the play was over, personal foul on the defense number 19. And that's their roughness blow to the head. 15 yard penalty, first down. That's Colin Duncan. Duncan forced a fumble earlier in this game. Again, frustrations. Are boiling over here. Oh, yeah, the reaction on uh, Tayshaun. Oh, my goodness. 
Oh, oh, my that was God. sensational, folks. If you have young children at home, shield their eyes. This you will. <laughs> you don't want to see this kind of violence on the field. We just hope Tayshawn Manning's okay after that one. <laughs> we will not show it again. Yeah, we will. Maybe we will. Colin Duncan <laughs> must have the most powerful right hand known to man. Took down the 300 pounder. Here's Rodriguez. Well, I'll tell you what, two Kentucky tight ends just took a defender about 14 yards over to the corner of the sideline and almost in the end zone. Josh Caddis, one of those guys. Yeah. 84 there, young true freshman tight end that the staff has been raving about. Not the biggest guy, but you mentioned it, Cole. Little double team took a defender out of bounds. He is physical, and they're excited now that he's healthy. Drake Jackson told me before the game, former Kentucky center who's on staff, they call him Cattle. Just love the way he operates. Said he is a pest in the run game. Late clock. Zeros on the snap. Here's Rodriguez. Pickering back on the field. Comes up with a tackle. First and goal now. Again, this is you after your case. Shield stand. the eyes of your small children. That is just brutal. I love the two hands up, too. Like, see, you see that? Third and short. Did not give him the first down on that spot. Loaded with tight ends now. Rodriguez bottled up. And he loses a yard. Timeout taken. With 90 seconds remaining in regulation, state down 10. Fighting Mike Leach's need a miracle. A double dip with Keeneland going on over the course of this weekend and last as well. I had a big one. Game warden in the second race took all my money, but remember our talk about the three stooges a couple of weeks ago? Yeah. The winner of the second race, Curly, Larry, and Moe. What about Shem? That was, you, oh. you had the names wrong, and they had it right after all, even oh, though it was yeah. wrong. Mr. Yeah. Stay with me. We had a long Curly, day. Larry, Moe. Yeah. Curly, Larry, Moe. Larry, Moe. Curly is accurate. Curly, oh, Larry, Curly. Moe is the name of the horse. Oh. Who's on first base? Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to SEC Saturday night presented by T-Mobile. Chris Rodriguez first down run and a stretch. The goal line just short. Love that little play. Second fourth down they've run that. Put Chris Rodriguez little offset fullback. He is cramping up isn't he? Yeah. He's getting the job done man. 196 yards for Chris Rodriguez tonight on 30 carries. Welcome back. C-Rod, wow, reintroducing himself to the SEC here. How quickly we forgot just how good Chris Rodriguez is and what a big part of this Kentucky offense he is. The physicality, the blocking doesn't always have to be perfect for him. He's going to run through arm tackles. First guy never brings him down. And he's cramping for sure because, well, he ran a couple football fields. He had a 27 carry, 206 yard night against Missouri last year for his career high. Part of a three touchdown night. No love loss between these two teams, is there? Jordan Davis right in the middle of it. What a big game for Kentucky to get back on track. After the demoralizing loss at Ole Miss, there really was a, a penalty away from maybe going the other way and then. Without Will Levis last week. Uh, two game losing streak is history for the Cats. And what really looked like was going to be a special season for Mississippi State. It still has promise undone by an offense that only put three points on the board in the first half and stymied once again for the second time in three years by this Brad White defense. Will Levis will keep the game ball. 
He'll have a chance to talk about his performance tonight. Let's get down to Cole. Coach Stoops, you found the running game. Your defense tackled in an extraordinary manner. You're able to close it out, hammer this thing down with that ground game at the end. It feels like this is just kind of the foundation blueprint of how you built this program tonight. Yeah, without a doubt. We had to go back and do what we do. And, um, you know, the old line really stepped it up. Chris really ran hard. Uh, we counted on Will in some really difficult moments. He made some big time throws. And uh, it was a great team effort. Defense played really solid all day. Why was the big personnel, extra tight ends, a couple fullbacks that we saw in the game, why was that able to allow you to be so successful? Oh, they're so, uh, they do a really good job on defense bringing pressures. And you could, you know, and I know we've had a problem with it. So, uh, you know, really out of respect for all the different things they do, we felt like we had to get in big sets a little bit and settle them down and, uh, and try to get the run game going. You're standing on the sideline. You see your quarterback go down. You see him get up. He grabs his shoulder again. Then he goes through the locker room. Then he sprints back out. I just want to know emotionally what was going through your mind when all that was taking well, place. Out of doubt, um, you know, he took a good shot, and our trainer right away wanted to look at it. He took a good hit with the AC joint. They had to go in and make sure that the, the uh, x-rays were negative and nothing was out of place or broken or anything like that. But I knew if it wasn't broken, that guy would be back. Coach, I hate must win games when people say that this felt about as close as it was though for your program why were they able to bounce back the way they were tonight I, I don't I mean that that you know that was seven years ago where I felt like that but every game in this league's a must win it's tough you know it's very difficult um, I wasn't very proud of the way we played a week ago um, but we you know you're gonna have some ups and some downs you got to be tough and resilient and bounce back and uh, we knew we had a really good opponent coming in here today and we had to play some really good football thank you coach thank you a great effort for this Kentucky program as a whole, including Chris Rodriguez. 30 carries, a buck 96, two touchdowns. Will Levis gets the honor of visiting with Cole. That'll come your way in just a moment. But first, our friends in the studio, led by Dart.